Brian, thanks for being here. Uh, appreciate you. Brian is the director of residential and commercial business development at Park. So, you know, everything that, that we do in a residential and commercial setting, about 70% of what the industry does, my desire is to grow that, keep real, building users and uses to the industry. Great, and we appreciate uh, Perk's support in this project. We couldn't have done it without, uh, without you guys. Uh, there's a, quite a few sponsors that we have too. Uh, Renai, Odi Data, uh, Intermountain Truck. Who else did we have? A Valley, Valley Propane provided the stove. And our biggest supporter was Valley Wide Cooperative. Uh, they did an amazing job with the propane installation, the underground tank. Uh, we couldn't have done it without our sponsors either. So without without any more uh, ado, ado, let's let's go through the house. Let's should we go outside and start from the, from the beginning? The house is uh, fully furnished. Uh, the builder was part of, uh, part of our project. Where the builder provided all this beautiful furniture for us, so we can host events and make it nice and comfortable for people to. To show up, you can have a sales meeting here. You could have customer meeting here. You could host realtor events here. Anything that you want to host at this house, just contact us. We'll put you on the schedule, uh, and you can utilize this home for your own business use. This is on a, a nice corner lot. Drive in it's a it's a little windy out here today, but it, it feels good. Right? It's gonna blow all this California dirty air out. Well, there, where's Mr. Chairman running off to? We have a special guest here today. Tom Daniels, our chairman of the Rocky Mountain Propane Association, is also here on site, and he just ran around the corner. So apparently, he's gonna be on the lawn for our, uh, our meeting. Uh, the house is a, uh, what do we call it? It's not a slab on grade, but it's a uh, crawl space type, single level uh, Rambler style house. It's made out of engineered uh, board, so it's super straight and it's well insulated. So I'll walk inside and show you the Renai uh, air handler and on demand hot water here. We got some special guests inside the garage too. I think they're still here building our barbecue. Oh, they ran away. All right. We're going to put this uh, little barbecue grill outside as well. This is the Renai. Hopefully, you can see this. This door is kind of. This is the Renai boiler system uh, tied into a uh, hydronic air handler. And I'm gonna get Brian to come out here and discuss that a little bit more, but it's also got the air conditioner and the hydronic uh, heating system all combined into one. So you have no gas fired furnace, which, you know, this time of year when you're gonna start up your gas fired furnace for the first time, you know how that goes. Stinky, burnt, dry air. This is gonna produce a really comfortable warm heat that's going to have a little bit of a humidity aspect to it so it's going to be really nice for uh, around here where the air is so dry so brian why don't you well you know one of the beauties of this is you see two uh, two furnaces or two things accomplished with a single gas connection so you've got your domestic hot water and your hot air with just a single gas line a single drop that your customer would would be responsible for and a single vent this is a condensing unit, so we've got PVC vent pipe, very easy uh, system to install. And again, instead of an, an open flame furnace, you, you, you're just using the hydronic or the hot water in a coil in the air handler instead of a coil in the floor, like you might think of for hydronic heat. So you know, th it just does everything, like I said, with a single opening and cost savings for the, the consumer and the customer. So if somebody want, was using their, uh, the hot water part of it, or uh, you see the bathtub in that thing, it's huge, right? So in the middle of the winter, if, if, if uh, your wife's getting a steaming hot bath going, is this thing gonna be able to produce enough heat as well? 
Sure, because I mean, if you think about that big bathtub, it's still only going to take a few minutes to fill up. So in the few minutes that it might need more than more hot water than warm air, it'll just cycle off, give you the hot water. It's hot water priority, so it'll give you hot water first, then kick it back through the coil and keep heating the air. And the cycle temperature is, you know, you don't have a big swing in the air temperature. So being off for, for 10 or 15 minutes isn't going to affect your interior heat. And how much electricity would a unit like this consume? Well, your, your tankless water heater is only going to use enough electricity at low amperage to run the ignition system and the fan and the, the motherboard. Your air handler, the variable speed fan, so you can set it on high, medium, or low, and depending on which one of those you have, would determine the actual draw. But you don't have a uh, heat pump condenser, you don't have the inefficient heat strips to deal with, and the, the things that really get expensive to heat with electricity. And you got high, medium, and low? Like at my house, it's like you turn on the fan and the fan's on. It doesn't have, is that new or is that? No, just... it, it, I mean, it is a preset. You decide how you want it, but you can set a high, medium, or low fan speed for the unit. Nice. And Perp did some help to develop this? Yeah, so, so we did co fund the development uh, with Renai to make sure that it, it worked and performed with the propane systems as well. Do you know much about the Renai boiler part? Is the difference between the boiler and the on, on demand hot water heater? Are these? So the difference between a boiler and just a traditional condensing tankless water heater is this has a secondary or separated system for the, the, the hot water for heat. So it doesn't come into contact with the hot water for your interior domestic hot water. So the boiler separates the two functions. A tankless water heater or condensing water heater would just use the same water and send it through the coil. Now the coil is what they call NSF certified. So it's safe for domestic water if you don't have the boiler. So you, you might need, yes, without the boiler, you would need a secondary pump to move the water through the coil. The boiler has the pump built in. Gotcha. So boiler has a pump filled into it, uh, but a pump is cheap. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you could add this unit. If you already had an on demand water heater, you could add that and replace your furnace pretty quick. Correct. All right, uh, anything else you want to add about this? Uh, you know, just stay tuned, we're continuing to develop. There's a second project to, to work on a retrofit or remodel project. So you're really targeting the electric heat strip. So if you've got a customer that's on a heat pump, we want a solution to pull that heat strip out and put the hydronic coil in so that they have efficient heat when they need it. Awesome, looks like we have a, our first visitor. Huh? Yeah. Tyler yeah. Pendill from Legacy Energy Consulting. Thanks yeah. for jumping in to your live to uh, the virtual propane expo. Right? Yeah. Awesome. So where do you go? At least, uh, you know, Chad, give this boy a raise. Yeah. So let's move on to the uh, Generac uh, standby generator. So this unit uh, comes with the Generac generators. Uh, it's got a certain amount of circuits that this will that this will run. It, it's it's not designed to run a uh, hundred percent of the house, but you can you can get to certain vital pieces of the home: the AC, the heating, the living room, the refrigerator, uh, and, and it's tied into the master panel over here. So as soon as you lose power, the Generac automatically starts up and runs these designated circuits so that that's that's pretty cool i mean let's let's face it you don't really need the entire house to be lit up in a power outage but it's nice to have all those vital services and chrissy's laughing because uh two weeks ago we had full power outage for four days at the house and i turned on my propane power generator and lit that place up like christmas morning i had everything turned on and the kids were a little embarrassed because they thought we were, or they thought I was showing off, but maybe I was. So one of the benefits that we want to show in the all propane home is the little amount of electric gear it takes to, to fill everything out. If this was an all electric home, you would be stacked with extra 240 breakers. This panel box would not have been large enough to power this home if it was all electric. So there's increased cost or there is savings by building on with propane. In fact, these two, two breakers are installed, but they're not connected to anything. The, yeah. the electrician just wouldn't do it without putting one in for the dryer and the range, even though they'll never be used. The dryer and the range would be a normal 220. Um, 
and and then if you had an electric baseboards or, or some type of electric heat system. And that's why we chose this area is because this when we when we looked for a builder here, it was hard. We went through 16 different builders before we found somebody that said, oh yeah, we would we would build this house using propane. Everybody else is like, why would you do that? Let's just do electric. Like, because it's cheaper for the builder or and it's going to be cheaper for the homeowner when they buy this house to the tune of about $500 a year to be on propane instead of all electric. Yeah, so we've got some stats inside the house. We'll go through those. But uh, Brian did a great calculator on the electricity use versus the propane use here at this house. And it's, it's pretty substantial. Uh, and the buyer of this house, free propane for life. Yeah, that's big shout out to Valleywide Cooperative to provide free propane for life to the buyer of this home. Uh, let's head outside and take a look at the generator and then we'll do a kind of a walkthrough on the rest of the home. Nice uh, Generac 11 KW uh, home backup system provided by Intermountain Truck. Thanks to uh, Joey and Amanda over there for providing that. This is a nice little quiet generator. It's uh, this is the exact same one that I have at my house, and it's very very nice. You know, Tom, you said this is an 11 KW. Usually when we look at standby generators, we're seeing 22, 24, 40 kW standby generators for houses that are all electric. So an 11 kW is a perfect example. You can have one of these on your showroom floor to demonstrate this is all the power that you need to, to electrify your all gas home. Now, it'll even run the air conditioner here. So, so we're, you know, we're taking care of sustainability winter or summer with a very small, low cost generator. You can reduce the cost again for your homeowner by having a gas house that's still resilient. And this thing runs on some Wi-Fi, uh, it can, communicates on some Wi-Fi to the home, so it does automatic starts and keeps the, the cycle, the batteries charged up, cycles it, so that you, you don't have to let it sit there forever, and then when it goes to start, it doesn't start. So it'll automatically do that. Um, and of course, propane doesn't rot it doesn't go bad right if you had a diesel power generator or a gas power generator, get the heat in there we got to make sure the diesel's oh, good man. this winter yeah that would that would be horrible because you don't you don't use these things very often but when you do use them you want it to work yep. and that's the beauty of having it tied into the propane system is it's always going to work for you so uh, and there's and there's lots of generac's not the only I mean, right. polar makes a great one Cummins has product on the market now uh, you, you still get the Briggs product through uh, even some of your propane distribution companies. Yeah. Do you have any uh, perk projects with generators right now? Um, we have some cutting edge projects with generator manufacturers and fuel cells that are coming, but that's as specific as I can be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we won't we won't push your arm getting more information out of you there. Uh, we got our awesome cornhole boards out here today, so. In about an hour, we're going to start the open house. We're going to go from one to eight. We're going to play some cornhole. We're going to sit around the propane fire pit. Okay, so we have a nice custom made uh, fire pit. These are getting so popular, right? And this was cheap. This we, we put this together for under 500 bucks. And can you go buy one at Home Depot, they're 500 bucks. If, if, you, can, if you can find one. If you look at what uh, internet searches for for fire pits, fire tables, anything that's happened since the beginning of COVID, outdoor living is is taking off. We knew it was good. We knew it was you know real popular. But with people staying at home, the opportunity to meet new customers in their backyard has has never been greater. Oh, I could only imagine even like your outdoor dining has got to be. So yeah, everybody's my, eating outdoors now at restaurants, right? They pushed almost half of their, their tables outside. They're going to need some serious heat for this winter because they're not going to want to give up those seats. No, and, and what if that's still the only seating that you have? Yeah. If you're 25% or 50% inside, you get your outdoor heating uh, for that seating and keep those restaurants open. 
well that you, we're here in Idaho and uh, you know, COVID is real, but it's, uh, you came a long way. I'm sure you went from one extreme to the other. Like nobody, nobody seems to be as, as concerned around in, in Idaho, but you, I've traveled outside of state and some places is a serious lockdown style. Like they want masks, they want you to not be seated in, indoors. Um, so this outdoor, this outdoor, for the whole country, not just for this area, it's going to be big this winter. And I, I bet you money that those outdoor uh, heating units will be sold out. Oh yeah, I mean, my, we added a little bit to our outdoor area this summer, and we ordered furniture in July, and we may get it Friday. Heaters and everything's going to be the same. We were lucky to get the dishwasher for this place, so it was. It was uh, that was a challenge. Yeah, and, and for you know, for your customers planning on generators, keep them going ahead. The, the supply chain is a little bit slow. Uh, some of our manufacturers are talking about December shipments for orders placed today. So so it's plan ahead. You got a uh, an underground 500 gallon tank over here. It was provided by Valley Wide Cooperative. I don't know where those boys are hiding. They need to come say hi. I think we'll track them down. But uh, nice little tank. We got a tank monitor in here uh, from OD Data. They're a member of our association. They provided the free tank monitor, and you can monitor the usage of this house. And that's one of the beauties of this is since Valley White is going to provide free propane for life of the owner, we can we'll be able to use the data from the uh, electric meter and the generator and the gas usage and really fine tune our numbers based on this exact house because you can look around and these houses go for miles this is a this is a really common style of home in this area this is, this is nothing extravagant this is a this is kind of a cookie cutter style house that's very popular so we don't we want to get good numbers on average size homes that people are actually buying. You got anything you want to mention about the underground well, tank? I, no, I think it, it speaks for itself. You know, as, as y'all know in the industry, they're, they're not obtrusive. They're un just really easy. Put a little, little shrub around that and there's no tank in the yard. Yes. Ready, ready to go. I think there's even a rock you could buy to cover it, right? Yep. And there's a distributor out here that'll be happy to help you with that. <laughs> Well, let's carry on and check out this beautiful house. We're very fortunate that the uh, builder did furnish this. We set up today right here and did the podcast, the State of Energy podcast. Brian was our special guest. Uh, we recorded about an hour ago. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we talked about a lot of cool things. So that podcast will be out tomorrow sometime. So make sure you go to the stateofenergy.com and download our latest podcast with some more insights from Brian about uh, pretty much all things propane. Huh? Yeah, all things propane really, you know, focusing on our residential and commercial markets. But one of the reasons that I'm here with Tom today is because when I was hired, I was told, you know, the, the West, the Northwest, really going to be hard for you to grow grow residential business because electricity is so cheap and it's so clean. And I said, well, I, I, it might be clean, but it's cold there and it, it can't be cheap. So this house, I'm really proud to say, when we compare the emissions, the carbon dioxide emissions for this all propane house to an all electric house that would be built next door, over 41% fewer carbon dioxide emissions for this all propane house compared to what is purported to be clean grid for Idaho. Over 50% of the electricity produced in Idaho is from hydroelectric sources. So we're told it's really clean. The propane house is even cleaner, has a lower carbon impact because we're using a American made low carbon fuel and we're using less energy than if it was electricity. And you, you put together this wonderful uh, info sheet here. Uh, it talks about the BTUs that would be used in propane versus electricity, the cost, and, and these numbers aren't just some 
what you made up. Like, oh, no, they, these, these are, are these are the government's numbers. Well, and for the price of propane here, we got real pricing from from the distributors, and we plugged these numbers in. And we and took an electric bill that we didn't take what the electricity utility says is the cost of electricity per kilowatt. We took the full bill divided by the kilowatts that they use and got the true cost of electricity for this home. A, a local bill. We actually took Tom Daniels bill from his home. He, he, he shared with us how much electricity. And he must have a lot of gas in that house because he didn't have a very big electric bill. <laughs> well, he does work for the propane company. All right, so what else we got on this? The carbon footprint of this house is, I mean, because that's what everybody's talking about, carbon footprint. What's my carbon footprint? Well, you got if you're if you're if you're concerned about your carbon footprint in your business in your home or what your family's putting out this 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 tells it to you right here this is almost half of what an electricity home produces and you know, I said that the electricity produced in Idaho is more than fifty percent hydroelectric but they can't produce enough power in Idaho for the demand so they import so when we look at when they when you figure in that imported power. It's over th three and three point three three units of electricity to get one unit of energy into the home. So it's worse than our average thirty three percent efficient. Because system. it's so far away. Yeah. So it's so far away, or the source that they use. So the plant that they use may not be at peak efficiency of a modern hydro plant or a uh, turbine plant. People think that West Virginia is coal country. It ain't. They don't produce right. near as much coal as Wyoming. And Wyoming's producing tons of coal, and it's all going for power generation. And that power is imported into Idaho. So when you hear, oh, we're, we're in Idaho, we're using hydropower, it's, it's just not completely true. You, only a little bit of Idaho is using hydropower. So let's, you got this beautiful kitchen here, granite countertops. We talked about the gas stove. This was a gift from Valley Propane. And our friend Brad uh, Sullivan from Valley Propane. Valley uh, is up in Montana. We're in Idaho, so this is a long ways for them to to gift this to us. So we really appreciate that, Brad, uh, and your team over there, Ralph. Super nice gas grill. We can, we got a nice fireplace here that was donated by uh, Gas Products from Idaho Falls. This fireplace is a nice Napoleon. It's a beautiful fireplace. It looks it looks really nice. And I, what's the demand on these nowadays? Is this uh, that's you see the automatic modulation of the flame? So those are direct vid units that will be less than a gallon every say four four and a half hours. Are these hard to get? Is there a shortage of them at all? Not, not yet. Uh, <laughs> still, still a lot of American uh, assembly in production for that product. So, so right now we're in good shape. All right. Uh, we'll go over here to the gas dryer. And believe it or not, this gas dryer was hard to get. We couldn't find one at all in Twin Falls. So this is the nice, uh, uh, what do we call this, the mud room area type thing, right? Uh, this nice laundry room, LG gas dryer this was i actually had to i had to buy this in utah and then drive it up here because we could not find one uh in town so if you're looking for gas appliances you might it might take a little while to get them but these these dry clothes very well I mean, there's right and it's less intense heat than your electric dryer so your, your clothes last longer uh, it's a lower cycle, shorter cycle time, so your, your cost, you're using, again, less energy in a shorter period of time, so you're magnifying your savings by using gas for a heating appliance. Beautiful laundry room, uh, great gas dryer. Go into the master suite. I really like the way they did these recessed ceilings. Was, they did a great job. And one of the reasons why this house, we built this in record time. Like, we started, we broke ground June 12th and we completed this in September 12th. So in under 90 days, we had this home built completely and we didn't mess around with what color we're gonna paint the walls or what carpet, like those little details that we, we're not experts on that anyway. So we left that up to the builder to get whatever trends 
are the best right now. And I think he did a great job. I, I have no complaints on the colors and the, the trim and the lighting and everything turned out really nice. The master bathroom is beautiful. It's got the giant tub, his and her sinks, little bathroom closet in there, and a huge walk-in shower, huge walk-in closet. The builder did, a, did an excellent job putting this together. I, I think anybody would be honored to buy this house. Uh, what else do we gotta show that's gas? Let's see, we can go into the, well, let's go to the other, the other side of the yeah, house. Show the other bedrooms and, and both baths are the, covered by the, the single. The air system on this is a little different than a standard uh, one as well, because the air comes from the, from the, let's see, the air comes from the top and down and blows in through the floor. Uh, so we had to order the air handler to be, yeah, so it's sort of, sort of upside down because you're, you're bringing it from the top and blowing out the bottom instead right. of what would normally be bottom blowing out the top. Because the, the return air is in the attic and the forced air for creating and cooling comes up through the floor crawl space. Two bedrooms back here. Uh, again, the, the people that, that furnished the house for us did a beautiful job. Uh, I, I hope Tom Daniels isn't running away right there. He is. He's not even gonna be a, he's not gonna be in here with us. All right. Another bedroom and another large bathroom. All right. Well, that's the uh, propane showcase home. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be on here. And Bill, if you're still listening, is there anything you want us else you want us to uh, to talk about why you got us here? Yeah, thanks a lot for showing us that. You know, it was really cool how you did the uh, the propane boiler, and uh, as a, also as the heater for the the house, as well as heating up the water. I thought that that was uh, one of the the coolest things for me, uh, seeing how you did that and uh, hearing how you you work the air and stuff like that for for that. Um, I'm going to see if we might have a Q&A going on here. So we, we have, hey, nice job, Tom. Plans for another home. Uh, would you want to do my home? And uh, brilliant. <laughs> you know, we are, we are planning on doing another one. So the idea between on this project is a, a couple. One, we built this, this beautiful example of a, of a showcase that we get to sell after we're done with it and turn those funds into another home. So it, it's, it's like the, the, the perk project that keeps on giving, right? So, which is, I have a hard time with some of these projects that we do with perk money because it's like you, you're done with it and then it goes away and it's, you never get to kind of gauge the, how well the project performed. And that one, once you use the money, it's gone. So this, this was the idea was to try to get the most bang for our buck that we get to keep reusing over and over and over. Yeah, and that's so rare a project. But to your point, it's super rare and it's super exciting to, to think that this brainchild of yourself and, and, and Brian, you know, is fabulous and that it really gives you a chance to do that. So, hey, thanks a lot for letting us take a peek into what you have built there. Brian, I know you're, you're kind of out of the screen, but thanks. Uh, this is fabulous. Thanks. Thanks for having Great me. Job. I take no credit for the design of this home. I know some about the components, but this is all Tom and the Rocky Mountain Perk. Perk was proud to support, and we are extremely pleased to be here today for the unveiling, but this is Rocky Mountain Perk. Yeah, awesome. So, hey, this is an example, Rocky Mountain Propane Association, building out an entire house, showcasing all the, the capabilities of propane. There's a podcast also that help you know, all of us get engaged and help us to engage our employees um, and, and help them train while they're driving, you know, they can listen to stuff uh, through the radio, so to speak. So it's, it, this, is a, this is a new generation of, of propane, you know, being able to recycle the, the perk funds into the next project as well. Uh, fabulous job, guys. Thanks a lot for letting us if, join you. If anybody that's logged in right now watching this from the Rocky Mountain Propane Association or anywhere in the country, and you want to host any type of event here, please do so. We want to make sure we get the most use out of this house. We want to host uh, realtors, builders, plumbers, 
legislators, code enforcers, anybody that you want to share the propane message with, you can do it right here in this fully furnished, beautiful home, and we'll give you the keys to the door. What, so what's the time frame? What is the window of opportunity to do that? Before we got, it we got, we're, we plan on selling this in March of 2022. So we've got 18 months that you can use this house for anything you possibly want. And then we're gonna start our next one in Utah in March of 2022. So we're gonna rotate from state to state every two years. So we're gonna do one in Utah, one in Wyoming, and one in Montana. Uh, so it's an eight year total project. And hopefully we, you know, the market doesn't totally crash or anything on us, but it, we've, we've already seen numbers from the builder that says, you couldn't build this house today for the same price that we contracted them with back when we started this project. So this, this, we might make a little bit of money at this, but we got a lot into it as well. There's a lot of time, a lot of marketing materials being made. So uh, we're gonna come out even or maybe slightly ahead and we're gonna keep doing it. Well done guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, there's no other questions at this point. So I'm gonna direct everybody that's on this. So if you have other questions, couple places you can go to on the virtual propane expo tom and the rocky mountain association have a uh, a booth there they're listed as one of the partners and uh, you can reach you go right to that booth and there's all the information on how to get in touch with tom on his website there's more information about this hey again guys thanks so much and thank you camera person mrs mrs clark <laughs> excellent job thank you all right well done thanks a lot and uh, for everybody that's on the show now there's gonna be another speaker in about 20 minutes Thank you.